Hey, welcome back once again to Jack's Tech Corner and another Photoshop Elements video tutorial. I am using today Photoshop Elements 2018, but this can be done in any version that you may have. And as the title I'm sure gave it away, we are talking about eliminating uh, distractions from your photograph. And we do this often because we want to um, take away anything that's distracting in the photo and maybe bring to the forefront the subject of your photo. A lot of times this happens when maybe somebody accidentally photo bombs your photo, right? They accidentally get in behind your photo. Uh, like the folks back here, um, we see on the right of the photo, they're going in to uh, visit this. Uh, this was actually an a, uh, arche archaeology, uh, archaeologist dig uh, that we went to visit when we was on our trip to Wyoming last summer. And this was actually, I believe, in the state of Illinois is where we were. Um, and uh, it was a very interesting place to visit. I do recommend it. So what we're going to do here to get started, as you see, we are in the expert mode. The first thing I do is I want to duplicate my background layer. And I'm going to do that with either Control J or Command J on a Mac. And we do this so we don't destroy the background layer, right? We don't want to destroy the original photograph. We want to work on layer one here. And one of my favorite tools uh, that I use often is called, let me see if we can bring this up here, is called the Spot Healing Brush Tool. Now the Spot Healing Brush Tool allows us to take things out of a photograph very easily without using you know, ways of cutting things and deleting them or erasing them out of the background. Because let's say if we would use the eraser tool, a lot of people say you can use an eraser tool. Yeah, maybe that's the case here, but what I find happens is we're going to make my brush size a little larger. If I was going to erase this pole, uh, we're going to shut the background layer off. You see what's going to happen here is we're going to leave uh, transparent pixels. <clears throat> so we're going to do that, and you see that's not going to work out for us, right? Because we are trying to take uh, stuff out of our photograph, and um, you know we are leaving transparent pixels behind that we have no filler for. So in Adobe's you know brilliant wisdom, uh, we're going to revert this again, duplicate that background layer, make sure we have a duplicate layer one up there. So instead of using the eraser tool, what I like to use is a very easy tool to use is the uh, spot healing brush tool. Now on the bottom here, there's two different tools. There's a spot healing brush tool, and then there's the healing brush tool. We are concentrating today on only using the spot healing brush tool. It's a very great tool to use, and we can use it in, in a multiple of ways. But the way I'm using it, is we're going to use it to get rid of our distractions. And what's nice about it is you don't have to worry too much about what you're touching because of the fact that uh, Elements is really good at seeing what you know what's around it. So what it's using here, it's using called Proximity Match. We can do uh, Create Texture. We can also do Content Aware. But we're going to use Proximity Match because it's going to match the proximity around the actual... Um, um, what is near, right? What, what's behind it and what's on the sides of it. I'm going to left click my mouse and just drag up here a little bit and you can see right away where it took it took that away. I'm going to make my brush size smaller. We're going to go just up to here, take that away. Just like so. Now in these trees I found that we can uh, actually get the brush size up here a little bit higher. And we can bring the brush size up, cover that sign up and just click once. And there's your proximity match. We're going to do the same thing on this sign here. We're going to just come right down to there. We're going to uh, go across the road here a little bit. And then right down to the base. See a little spot there? Just simply touch it. Now, you have this pole right behind my arm here, my, my right arm. And I want to get rid of that pole, but I can't go over my arm because it's going to allow the pole to come through. So we're going to start at the bottom. And we're going to try to do this. We're going to use the proximity of the side here. And we're going to go right up, down. And I'm just painting over top of this pole, right? We'll see how this comes out. 
And there we go. So if there's a little bit left over, you can just touch it up there a little bit. Just like so. And again, on the back of this pole here, we're going to just, and I'm using just smaller uh, strokes on this pole. And sometimes it doesn't want to cooperate with you. We're going to get a little bit bigger here and we'll go right up the pole here to the trees. There we go. And then if you have a little place left over here, we can always touch that up. Just like so. I'll go back down across here. There we go. And then the pole on the sky here, we'll just go up and we'll hit the sky. And we'll get rid of that part of the pole. All right. So that gets rid of that pole really well. We can get that out of the scene here. Now what we're going to do is work on these wires. And I find the wires, I like to do them one at a time. So we're going to go down to these wires there. I'm going to take this wire out here. And again, we're just removing distractions from our photograph. Just like so. On the people in the background here, we can still see them, but the photo's already looking more pleasing to me. This looks more like something I want to frame because I don't have all those distractions behind me. So we're going to go down here. We can leave that sign if you want. You can get rid of it. Totally up to you. Um, we are going to actually uh, go ahead and get rid of it. And we're going to get rid of these folks back here. Just like so. It's like magic. And we'll get rid of these two poles here. So I just uh, simply made my brush size a little bigger. You can see it getting bigger there. And I just clicked on those and got rid of those poles. If you look down here on the edges, um, I have a little vignetting going on from my lens. So I'm just going to click on that. And I can clean that vignetting up even very easily. Just like so. So now there you go. You can see we got rid of all of our distractions in our photograph. It is just simply me now standing out there with the motorcycle. Uh, very nice shot there that uh, my wife actually took. And <clears throat> we took all these with our uh, A6000 Sony. Um, and probably at that point, I think I had a kit lens on there because we did not have our uh, new 35mm uh, lens. But let's show you now what it looks like without the distractions and with the distractions. So here, if I shut off the visibility of my layer, just shut the eyeball off to see what you have in the background. You can see all the distractions. Get rid of the distractions, bring the distractions back. Get rid of the distractions, bring the distractions back. So there you go. It's a very nice way. It's a very cleaned up photograph now. You can crop it, do whatever you want to with it after this point. Um, and a lot of people ask me at the end of the photos or at the end of these videos, they said, well, how do you save that? Well, there's two ways I save my photos. I go to File, Save As, and we see where this is already edited here. Um, and what I want to do first is I save it as a PSD file. And the reason you save it as a PSD file, that's a Photoshop file, is it saves the layers. So it saves all your work in there. We're going to save that. Now, here's the kicker. If you have your photograph saved as a PSD file, there's some developers that will accept those, but they're very far and few in between. So what I always do before I send these out for processing, I do a save as, and I change the Photoshop format to JPEG format. Okay, very simple. Then I click Save. The next thing you do, you look here at the total size. The quality is 12. It's an 18.4 megabit file, right? Megabyte file, 18.4. We could drop this down to 10. That's going to give us an 8.5. If you have high-speed internet, I would suggest leave it at large because then if you want to blow this uh, picture up, this photograph will work fine as a poster size uh, at this size of megapixel. It's not going to pixelate when they blow this thing up. So you can do anything you want, print this at any size you want, and it's going to be just fine. Um, click on Save or click on OK. 
And then we have a JPEG file as well as the PSD folder or PSD file. So we can always come back in here and work on this again. Folks, thank you so much for watching this video tutorial. And um, as always, give this uh, video a thumbs up. I do appreciate that. When you give it a thumbs up, it moves it higher in the YouTube rankings. Also, don't forget to check out jtclearning.com, jtclearning.com, where you can take my courses on Photoshop Elements, and you can learn so much more from beginning to end. You know, we go through the organizer and all the editing. We go through uh, quick edits, guided edits, and expert edits. So check those out uh, right now. Go over and check those out at jtclearning.com and sign up for one of those courses today. Don't wait. Uh, get a jump start on your photo editing. Thank you again so much for watching, and I will talk to you next time here on Jack's Tech Corner. Bye for now.